the hours turn into days, days into weeks, weeks into months, and eventually months into years, the search efforts never ceased. So many people have been hurt by this. We hope and pray that with time, this community can finally have closure and start to heal from us, from this. It has just been shock and a lot of gratitude. Of course, we've got a lot of questions. It has just now opened another chapter in this story. Almost two years ago, authorities charged an Irwin County man with the death of Tara Grinstead. She's the high school teacher and beauty queen that vanished from her South Georgia home in 2005. It is the case 13 WMAZ has followed since Tara's disappearance, one some thought would not be solved. Now, the arrest brought some sense of closure, but it's what's happened since then that has left everybody still searching for the truth. Chelsea Bimefor recaps what we know about Tara Grinstead and where the case currently stands. Two years ago, the Grinstead case finally began to unravel. But over the last 24 months, the suspects, the court hearings, and the emotions behind the case all seem to be getting tangled up. I started crying because I was with her Saturday, and it's so weird because I walked her out to her car, and then I haven't seen her since. October 22nd, 2005, Irwin County High School teacher and beauty queen Tara Grinstead disappeared from the small town of Osceola. Her face plastered everywhere, t-shirts, balloons, flyers, everyone was looking for Tara. There was no sign of a scuffle in the house, in the yard. It looks like she left with somebody that she knew. Investigators searched high and low. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. You know, the sheriff has his opinion and I have my opinion and it is not the same. Um, I have not lost hope. Eventually, months turned into years. Finally, in 2008, the GBI released new information about a latex glove found outside Tara's home. There was a partial print inside, but at that point, no match. That hole, it doesn't get bigger or smaller, it just remains a hole. But on February 23rd, 2017, that hole finally began to shrink. All of these leads ended with a dead end until the last couple of days. GBI agents took Ryan Alexander Duke into custody, charged on six counts, including Grinstead's murder. Our wounds are deep and our hearts are broken. Five days later, GBI agents searched a Ben Hill County pecan farm for Grinstead's remains. But before investigators could tell us much, an Irwin County judge imposed a gag order in the case. They feel that the, they've lost control and they uh, want to gain it back, so they issue a gag order. Just over a week after the first arrest, a second man, Bo Dukes, was charged with helping conceal Grinstead's body. We learned he and Ryan were high school classmates and his uncle owned the pecan farm where investigators were searching for Tara. We are cooperating with the local sheriff's agency and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation in regards to this matter on our farm. Bo Dukes bonded out of jail while Ryan remained in custody and was indicted on all six charges against him. Ryan Dukes' attorney entered his client into a not guilty plea. Bo also indicted and also pleaded not guilty to the three charges against him. Then in September 2017, he was charged with four more counts related to the case in Wilcox. These new indictments enter the Grinstead case into a third South Georgia County. In October 2017, 13 WMAZ's lawyers appealed the gag order to the state Supreme Court of Georgia, arguing the media's First Amendment rights. The right of free expression, the right of speech, and the protection against prior restraints is the chief protection, the chief guarantee of the First Amendment. Five months later, the state Supreme Court threw the gag order out, but by that time, the GBI had already turned their case file over to all the lawyers involved. We stop talking to the media and we defer everything over to our district attorney, who is the one that will be prosecuting that case. As people grew silent, documents showed the case's progression. In August 2018, Ryan Duke parted ways with the public defender and secured a new defense team that's representing him for free. We believe doing a service and saving the county a lot of money 
In November 2018, Ryan appeared in an Irwin County courtroom with his new attorneys, clean shaven and well dressed. The prosecution and defense sorted through more than 30 motions filed in his case. Weeks later, another bomb dropped online. This 11 page document first appeared on the Up and Vanish discussion page. A leaked confession hit the internet December 2018, outlining an alleged 2017 interview between Ryan and the GBI. As investigators worked to figure out who posted it, Ryan's accused accomplice, Bo, was ordered back to federal prison for charges in a separate case. But before turning himself in, he was charged with sexually assaulting two women in Houston County. He will be number one priority until we can get him in custody. Considered armed and dangerous, he led authorities on a four-day long manhunt before being taken into custody at a relative's house in Irwin County. And just last week at a bond hearing for Ryan Duke, GBI Special Agent Jason Shadell verified that Ryan's DNA was in the glove investigators found outside Tara's home. He also said Bo Dukes is the one who leaked Ryan's confession online. Bo Dukes is currently in the Houston County Jail where he faces possible indictment for these sexual assault charges. Ryan Duke is still in the Irwin County Detention Center. After a judge denied his request for bond, his trial is scheduled to begin April 1st in Osceola.